Hello family, I hope anyone who likes my videos to support me by subscribing to my channel. Please give me the energy to make more effort into videos. Thank you for your support family and let's start our movie recap. Our movie begins with a cute young girl whose mother would enter her in every local contest. Her mother would frequently remark that she would always choose beauty over intelligence if given the choice, and the young remembered those words. This young child grew up to become the stunning Amelia, a supermodel on the run who has a promising future. Although she excels at her career, she also considers it to be extremely dull. She works stifling hours and is frequently disturbed by obnoxious photographers. Amelia first meets Harry, a gorgeous millionaire, at one of her numerous fashion exhibitions. They start dating passionately, and soon Amelia is relocating to Harry's enormous estate. Her existence seems to her to be practically a fairy tale. In the morning, when Amelia hears weird noises coming from Harry's office, she gets out of bed to investigate, locating her boyfriend and erecting a massive shelf there. Harry seldom does this since he generally likes to work with an expert, but today he says he was inspired. His books and awards do not belong on the shelf. Amelia receives it as a gift and thinks it's lovely, but she doesn't think all her shoes will fit inside. Harry then makes it clear that the shelf is actually for Amelia. She is expected to be there all day. In Harry's desk, she will have a stunning view of the pool. As a result, he will be able to look at her as he works. Because he can always remember what he has and never lose sight of what it's all about by staring at her, he believes that this will make him indestructible and enable him to start a hundred enterprises. Amelia expresses her disapproval of the plan and tells Harry that she needs to go to work, but he just answers. She ought to leave since she despises her work. Harry, however, believes she is too unusual to have regular life and wants to take all the necessary precautions to ensure she never has to worry about anything again. Even while she is present, he swears to worship her forever. He doesn't give a damn what people might think. He just continues saying that he would be the happiest man in the world if he did this. Amelia finally caves and agrees to try. Before removing the ladder, Harry assists her in climbing it so that she may sit on the shelf. He then provides her with a cushion to make her more comfortable. This is a very beautiful perspective of a fairly wonderful existence, he observes. Harry then proceeds to prepare breakfast for the two of them. Amelia tries to push the uneasiness away and focus on what she is doing now that she is alone herself in the room. Later on, Amelia and Harry get married, but even at the reception, Amelia spends her time sitting on a shelf in her bridal gown and observing everyone socialize. Amelia is surprised to see so many people looking at her when Harry makes a brief statement and requests a toast for for her. The night of the wedding, Harry and his new bride spend it on the shelf after bringing the ladder back. Amelia attempts to keep herself occupied by reading magazines, painting her nails, and doing other things as the days pass. Harry gets distracted from his business phone conversations by the noises she makes while exercising but he doesn't seem to mind. He even says that his work keeps him from thinking about her. In an effort to commemorate even international festivals, Harry also brings her opulent presents practically every day in the form of stunning flowers, sparkling jewels, and delectable chocolates. Sadly, the initial thrill quickly wanes. It's terribly dull to stay on top of the shelf, and not even the maid will talk to Amelia outside. Simple query. She loses her autonomy, freedom, and free will because of this existence. Harry also begins to pay her less attention, no longer bringing her presents, but only stopping by to kiss her goodbye. He doesn't even pay attention to the stunning clothes Amelia dons especially for him. And now every noise she makes while he works irritates him as well. Thus, he won't even let her hum a tiny melody or acknowledge her attempts to strike up a conversation. She has been reduced to nothing more than a wall ornament, a genuine trophy. Amelia pulls out her most opulent outfit yet one afternoon. I wished Harry would give her even a passing glance. Instead, Harry observes that his workstation is not receiving any natural light. He thus asks his staff to assist him in making a change. Now, Amelia is confined to looking at the back of her husband's neck and is unable to contain her emotions any longer. Amelia has been on the shelf for three years. Harry's return from work is audible to her, but he doesn't stop by to say hello. He has become more bored and distant. Even after yelling and calling her husband's name, Amelia is unable to catch his attention. This is the final straw that causes the crack. She is persuaded by Amelia that the moment has come to leave the shelf. At last, it's more difficult than it seems. Although it's not that high, Amelia's viewpoint is very rapt as a test after spending so many years imprisoned up there. She simulates breaking up with her show before throwing it away. Her terror is only increased by witnessing it fall. She is, nonetheless, adamant about going. She then accepts after practicing in the 
second pair of shoes, she needs to exercise trust. From Amelia's perspective, it is a lengthy, terrifying fall, yet she really makes it to the floor fast and uninjured. Other than some discomfort, Amelia slowly starts to make her way down until she can no longer grasp the shelf and falls to the floor. After years of inactivity, it is challenging to walk with atrophied legs. Amelia then slowly and clumsily makes her way outdoors, eager for an eye-opening encounter that will be full of self-discovery and feeling the breeze on her face. She utilizes furniture to help her stand up. Once more, Amelia is delighted, and soon she starts to explore like a baby, seeing the world for the first time. Whirling around in joy, Amelia touches the pool water, throws out a lot of tennis balls, and dances through the house's rooms before putting on her shoes to go to the street and climb inside the mail truck, which lowers her. As she enters the city, she continues to act in an unconventional manner as she develops the courage to walk fast and feels at last like a normal member of society. Once more, Amelia gives hugs, the truck introduces itself to onlookers, dances on top of a table, and even offers to give a man a ride on his Vespa. The journey is a ton of fun. Amelia jumps off as they arrive at the coast to go exploring. She dances with an unfamiliar person once more, but she also tears off a man's parking ticket, attends a yoga class, chases a puppy, and ultimately finds her way to the beach where a flash mob joins her in dancing. Amelia tries to strike up a conversation with several strangers, but they are uninterested in her happiness and decline to give her a towel, which is just what she needs to be brought back to reality as she rushes into the water and is smacked by a chilly wave. Amelia, who is feeling cold and alone, decides to wander around town once more until she comes across a cosmetic store. She notices some women getting makeovers while observing the state of her own face in the window reflection. Her mascara has run and all of her concealers have washed away. Wanting to feel pretty again, Amelia enters the store and uses the free samples to clean up her face. When she no longer looks disheveled, she immediately feels better. Jordan, one of the clerks, is amazed by Amelia's cosmetics ability because she works here but it took her some time to master them. Jordan ponders if Amelia does makeup. Amelia corrects her right away and clarifies that her role is to serve as a millionaire's trophy while she sits. Amelia responds by expressing her own mother's beauty above intelligence belief and expressing her surprise that Jordan does not condemn her for it because her mother taught her that what is important is to be happy. She does not need to make a decision. Jordan explains to her she may possess both. Amelia is quite happy to hear this because she never considered it in that way. Just just before Amelia departs, Jordan offers to sell her something because she works on commission, but Amelia is forced to decline the offer because she has no money on her at the time. Amelia then returns home and spends some time staring at the shelf. She hesitates for a while before grabbing a fire poker and starting to smash the shelf. It starts out slowly since demolishing such large objects is always a daunting experience, but it eventually becomes very fulfilling. Amelia then starts bashing faster until there are nearly no shells left. Amelia launches her own beauty boutique with her name as the brand a year later. Because of its popularity, there are consistently lengthy lines of people waiting outside. Amelia sits on a shelf with a neon lit sign above her at the store, yet follows the same routines. That sentence, let everyone look, was meant to serve as an example of how she is both extremely attractive and intelligent enough to manage her own affairs. But when customers stop by to say hello and compliment her looks, they leave before learning more about her. Amelia is still just another tool in the beauty machine that was created to degrade great women and is nothing more than a living trophy. This is how our movie ends. Leave us a comment on how you found this movie recap. See you in the following movie recap.